been away for a couple weeks. Um, one of those weeks I was traveling in Texas. Uh, went to Houston, San Antonio, and Corpus Christi. I uh, was on a family vacation, so you know there wasn't a lot of chance to break away and go hunting for a lot of inverts, but I did see some incredible orb weaver spiders at Brazos Bend uh, State Park. That's just south of Houston, about 35 minutes. They were amazing. They were huge. They were <laughs> at least this big, and, and their bodies on some of the females were like this and they were between trees along the swamp. Just webs everywhere and the little males were hanging out. It was so cool. Everywhere I walked, on the left, on the right, there they were. And there were alligators and I walked by so many alligators I even saw baby alligators. Uh, maybe I'll make a video. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see some of those photos that I took and uh, I could also share uh, maybe do a voiceover about the experience and about the animals and what it was like walking through there on an early Monday morning when there were hardly any people. Uh, so anyway, I'm back and my first um, matter of business here that I'd like to take care of is share a feeding video with you. Um, and then I want to do an update video and let you know how everyone's doing and who I have, all of that stuff. So. Also, I want to thank my subscribers. I have almost 200 subscribers. And given that I am not really trying um, to entice people to come, and I'm just doing this for fun, whatever I can, I can do, whatever I feel I can do, I'm really grateful. So um, I definitely do have things planned. Um, to to give to my subscribers you know some some giveaways but um that's in the future and for right now um let's get on with the feeding okay here we have my grandma stola poker paste little thing little thing is suspect female this is my very first tarantula it was a tiny little sling that uh, when i took it out of the vial it stuck its little butt in the air and did the I'm a big spider. So let's see. We had a molt. We've eaten since the molt. But maybe today little thing is hungry. We're gonna find out. I can see little thing is in a shy posture, so it's very possible this isn't gonna work. Oh, you never know. See? That was just kind of a hmm. I got my cricket. Thanks. It's like a drive through window. Okay, my Haplocosmia Himalayana. And this just might be one of those nothing to see here folks type of days, type of feedings. Um, and when this one does eat, it grabs its prey and disappears. It's lightning fast. It's a fossorial. I don't see it much. Oh. I just barely caught that, but you see, that's just how it goes. There's a little bit of uh, horror movie action there, a bit of a struggle, and then all of a sudden it's just yank, gone. So, that's my Haplocosmia Himalay on a sling. You are looking at the beautiful lair of my Ceratogyrus darlingi. This is the rear horned baboon. And this one is a juvenile and it molted hmm, it's been close to five days or maybe more I'm not sure and I just saw that the little feet were out so let's try and see if we can do a feeding do we have a hungry one or a grumpy one two minutes that's a long wait There you go. Gone. For anyone who's curious, oftentimes I just use my tongs to change out the water bowl. Get rinse it out, push it down. 
refill. This is the spring water you can get at the store in jugs. Um, right now we're looking at the enclosure of my Formictibus cancerides. This one may or may not feel like eating. Okay, my Formictibus cancerides is a juvenile now and just molted. Um, it's been about five days, so I'm gonna see if he or she is hungry. Oh boy, don't disappoint us now. And this one right here is a suspect female. And at this age, it's really hard for me to tell. I don't really have a very good scope for figuring this out, but I do believe that I saw a little flap on the molt. So we'll just have to wait and see. And this one has molted. Um, I got this one looks like on the 16th of May 2018 and it's now the 16th of July. It molted on June 7th and then again um, about four or five days ago and when I got it it was about an inch already maybe close to an inch so you know now I'm, I'm not sure how big it is now I'm gonna wait and see after it eats and comes out and starts walking around but it really surprised me when I lifted up the cork bark and I saw how much size it had gained. And I am guessing this one could probably eat a second cricket. Uh-oh. <laughs> Escape. Well. I was very excited to bring this one into the family here. I watched Tom Moran's video about Formictibus cancerides. It was really informative. You can already see on the carapace there is some copper and it's, it's really metallic. It's very pretty. A little bit of webbing there. Look at those legs. Amazing. I'm always fascinated with the details that I see as they change from being tiny slings to growing into juveniles. And uh, I have yet to have one that I've grown all the way from a sling to an adult, but the way this one's growing, um, and also my Laziadora Parahibana peekaboo, my larger of the two that I have. Look at that little butt. That's a fresh molt butt. <laughs> what a cutie. Who else can dance with just, I mean, literally two meals hanging out of their lips and still be cute? Here's my sweet little Brachypalma classy. Uh, I think we're a approaching juvenile stage. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not an expert on how to tell, but uh, that's what I would think. Maybe one more molt. And uh, just beautiful. And I'm going to try to feed this little suspect male. He molted maybe around the same time as the Formictibus cancerides. Let's try this out. Oh, well, <laughs> surprise. There you go. Now this video is not bringing out um, the pink coloring that this one has on its legs. One more thing I wanna say about my Brachypalma classy is I have this uh, fake succulent and it's very, you know, the shape of it's very nice and I can put it over the burrow like that and there's plenty of places where there are exits and entrances. It's right over there. It's a very um, handy, handy uh, hide.
for this one. Chromatopelma cyanopubescens. This one is named Mercury. We just like to name everything after Freddie Mercury. So there's a little bomb in there. You can barely see it. Oh. <laughs> ah, she's coming out the top of her burrow. The cricket just made a dramatic exit to another corner. <laughs> Um, isn't that cute? Doesn't that just look like a little witch or hobbit house? <laughs> I do see a spooter butt. And I don't know if we can lure this one out or not. This one is suspect female. Okay, let's try this. Oh. Into the water dish. Around the corner again. Get it. Oh, it has one in its mouth already. <laughs> there we go, look at that. Will the other cricket wander in that direction? Maybe. So the, the capture happened behind the scenes here. And we have someone eager for a second one. There we go, gotcha. And this one, the last molt, definitely a juvenile now. Really is a stunning species. Right now the abdomen is orange and black, almost like tiger striped. The legs are deep sapphire blue and the carapace is this iridescent, almost iridescent green. And then of course, you know, you get the characteristic tent-like webbing. That green bottle blues are known for. Very pretty little abdomen. Has a shiny copper patch on the abdomen where there's a lot of earth decaying hair. Sometimes people mistake this for a tarantula being in premolt, but they are different. In premolt, the actual skin on the abdomen will be dark and the abdomen will be bloated and the legs on the tarantula, if you look very closely, will appear to have shrunk a little bit because it just seems like it must have something to do with the hemolymph and getting ready to molt. They, they almost appear dehydrated. The legs look more spindly. And that's usually within a day or two of a molt. And here we have one Spoot who is ahead of his or her time. This is a, an Acanthoscuria geniculata. Oh, fail, 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 fail. Dang. We're talking about a little spider with big attitude. This is my Laziodora parahybana. Actually, this is number one. Number two is Peekaboo, the bigger, the bigger of the two. And uh, I had to take the cork bark off so that you can see the burrow. And uh, let's try this a feeding.
So here I have a very pretty little Afona Pelma hensai. This one molted and has been scurrying around a lot more since this last molt. And I'm going to attempt a feeding. Or the cricket's just going to take a walk. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> oh, little one. I pre-killed your cricket for you because I thought maybe that would be better. Are you going to do it? Yes, there you go. Not so bad. This one does tend to be on the shy side, so that's a real treat. The sea of feeding. To me, this tarantula right now has the most beautiful chestnut brown abdomen. I just love this color. It's just so rich and beautiful. I am a real sucker for the earth tone tarantulas. <laughs> He's flirting. Well, that concludes our feeding video and I hope to see you soon next video. 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 Well, that concludes another feeding video. I hope that you've enjoyed it and you'll be back to see what's next. That's the problem. When you're filming in nature, you never know what's going to happen. I think there's a bird murder going on in the tree. Anyway. Bye.